Hey everyone, welcome back to Dark Forest for the next episode in our Let's Play series. So we're now into January and the price for silage is pretty much at its highest. So one of the first jobs we're going to do today is load up our silage bales. I will also try and put the straw bales on as well as if we can. So we can take those with us at the same time. And then we can get those sold because we've got no need for them at the moment as we don't have any cows so we don't need bedding or the straw or making total mixed ration for any cows so we don't need the silage so as I said before it gives us a little bit of extra money from the grass field so we've got that extra cut from it to uh, get a little bit of extra money so I think we should get around about 20,000 from the silage bales at the current price just below 200 per 1,000 litres uh, which isn't too bad um, it just reminds me, I've got barley in the bucket from when I topped up the chickens feed. I did sell off 250 of our chickens just to reduce the amount of feed we was using. Um, they then reproduced again since then, so I've literally, just before I started recording, sold off another 250. Um, we didn't get as much for the second lot of 250 I sold, because obviously they were pretty much newborn, so there was only worth... Uh, one dollars and five dollars uh, for one group um, but yeah it's just to try and conserve a bit of feed now why can I not open my bales have they fermented yet oh they're not quite ready yet that's why right so <laughs> I just, just thought yeah I knew they was going to be ready today, but they're not quite ready yet. So what we'll do is we'll wait for those to finish fermenting, which shouldn't take too long. We'll go and get the two containers that I filled with 9 meter logs. So just over here we've got two more containers I bought last time. Um, as you can see as well, I've got quite a few piles of logs there. Those are all 8 meters. So I've continued working away, clearing this area, cutting down a few more trees. They're all 8 metre long, so what we'll do is we'll sell these two containers. That should give us enough money then to buy a second FDR machine that we can use for loading. And I'm also going to get the forestry trailer so we can start loading up the 8 metres as loose logs. And we'll take those to sell and see how much we make. And I've just noticed as well there's several shorter uh, off cuts of logs I've missed. There's another one there. I thought I'd got them all just. I've literally just been over to the production sawmill to top that up. And also sell what was left of the uh, short logs. Thinking I'd got them all. Uh, but obviously not. Okay, so let's get these two sold, and this may be, for a while anyway, the last two containers we sell. Depending on how much we make from a trailer load of the loose logs. So 27,876, and another 27,086 for that second container. So we're up to $187,998. So that's not too bad. As I mentioned before, I'm going to keep hold of these two trailers for now, but... If we do get to a point where we're not really going to use them anymore, uh, we'll probably look at selling them. So let's get that switched off and we'll go and see what they've got in store for us today. Also check the used equipment, which I've not checked myself yet. Uh, nice big air hoe drill. Uh, <laughs> we could actually afford that, but we probably couldn't afford the air cart as well. I don't think we've got a tractor to pull it. Um, yeah, nothing really different from when last time I checked, to be honest. So we we'll go forestry machines, and what I'm thinking of getting is either the Tiger Cat 880. Um, which I think might be the best option. I think that's pretty similar to the Hitachi. I think they're very similar. Um as we've already got a tiger cat, we could stick with another one. And say this one's got much more reach on it and is a lot better for loading than the one we've currently got. So we'll buy that for 150,000. And the next thing we want to get as well is also in 
forestry. And we're going to get one of these forest trailers. Don't know if we'll be able to pull this one. I think this is the new one, but it's 50, 51.1 tons. Uh, my modified one's only four tons. So I don't know uh, which will be the better one to go for. Well, that one's quite heavy. I don't know if fully loaded up we'll be able to pull that one. So yeah, we'll try this one and see how we get on with it. So that's 30,500. So that doesn't leave us with a huge amount of money. So we're down to 7,498, but we've got the Tidecat 880 that we can now use to load up this trailer. And uh, we can fit three lots of 8 meter logs on here, so it's plenty of space as well. Nice big wide bunkers, so we should be able to fit quite a lot on there. So we'll get that loaded up, and then we'll be able to see exactly how much we make from one trailer load compared to two containers. Try and gauge whether it's worth to continue with containers or to switch over to loose logs from now on. Okay, so we've got the new Tiger Cat over here. And what we'll do, we'll try and get this first trailer loaded up. And we can take this to sell and see how much we get. Uh, just while we wait for the silage bales to finish fermenting. And then once they're ready, we'll get those loaded up and over to the uh, sell everything containers to get those sold. Hopefully, while we're waiting, the price doesn't drop any more than it uh, currently is. So we don't want to be losing too much money from that. So say we should be able to fit a decent amount on this one trailer. And whether we can get more than what we would in the container, I don't know. And we're also selling one meter shorter lengths. So eight meters rather than nines. Which when I've, whenever I've tested it uh, from uh, trees anyway, 8 metres is always like a, one of the optimal lengths to sell logs at per tree basis. So looking at this trail, I think it was six meters. I should have cut, not eight. I think seven. You can just get three on. Um, I was probably getting confused with the uh, trailer I used to use in FS19, where you could get um, eights on. Um, yeah, I don't think we're gonna get three lots of eight. You possibly could if you was really, really neat in stacking them. Um, but yeah, I think uh, three lots of sixes would have been better. As you can see, we're uh, probably, if I put those in, we're going to be overhanging quite a bit on the end. Um, so we'll drop those ones in there. Yeah, so we'll get rid of all the eights, and I think the next lot of trees we cut, we'll have to do sixes. Because, yeah, three lots of eights is going to be too much. I think, as I said, you can get sevens if you're like, really neat at stacking them. I think you can get three lots of seven on. Um, but I think sixes will be easier. I say there's me completely forgot what I uh, cut because so, <laughs> I hadn't got the trailer at the time. I just cut eight, thinking it was eight we could fit on here, and I've made a right mess of these last bunk. I can just pick that one up to uh, tidy it up a little bit. Maybe not. Uh, this is where forestry can get a bit frustrating at times. <laughs> Logs. Don't do what you want them to do. Right, you get in there. Nope. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Some, sometimes it goes well, sometimes it just does not go the way you want it to. Like I say, it only takes one log to mess everything up. But, uh, it doesn't want to play nicely. So we'll leave that load as it is I'm not going to try and put any more on there get that strapped down um, so yeah I've got 
three, four more stacks of eight meters. So I'll probably get all those sold and then we'll, any more we cut, we'll do sixes. So we'll just double check the best price for wood, which is currently the celeb thing container. So we'll take these up there and see how much we get for this load. I'll, I'll probably get the, the rest of the eight meters all loaded up, get those sold. And then any more we do after that, we'll uh, try a full load of six meters and see how much we get for that. I'd say it, it might be worth just continuing the nine meter containers and possibly getting a third trailer so we can uh, get three containers at a time. Okay, so let's get this load sold. I see how much we make. I'm not anticipating any huge amounts. <laughs> Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how much we get when we can properly load up this trailer with uh, six meters. So I'll get those unstrapped and see how much we can get for this load of eight if we can sell them all. So 46,688 and that's not all of them so that wasn't too bad for a uh, considering the trailer wasn't completely full. So there's another 2,968 with one log left to sell. And there we go, another 579. So we're back up to 57,771. So it said, I'll go and finish getting the rest of the eight meters all loaded up and get those sold. And then we can start cutting some sixes. Okay, so all the eight meter logs have been loaded up and sold. So we're up to $164,069 now. So I'll just double check the silage bales, see if they're ready yet. And they should be ready or close to being ready. 97%, I think the first ones are probably ready now. And 98%, so yeah, still a little bit, a bit longer, but they're not too far off. So we'll get those sold today as well as the straw. Uh, but now we've cleared most of the logs out of the way, we can get the next sheep pasture built so we know where that's going to go. Uh, so we've opened up quite a big area now as well for uh, getting another field in which we'll need for oats this year. So we'll just drop that off there and we'll get the sheep pasture built which will go next to this one. All right, so we're going to build mode. I'm going to build another one the same as this one. As I mentioned last time, I want to bring it over slightly just to have a gap between the two. So we'll go with the wrench extension set. And we'll get the snap mode on. I want to try and get this lined up so it's in the right place. And so I want to try and leave a slight gap between the two, which I think that's big enough. Maybe a bit too big. Maybe bring that back a little bit more. And um, we'll go about there, I think. Now, if we go now with the meadow grass, which I've lost, and then we'll just get rid of all the bushes inside there. So yeah, we're not going to move any sheep into this just yet. They've still got a few months before they're ready, but at least we've now got this in place, ready for when we need it. Uh, so that gives me the uh, outline of this so we know exactly where that's going to go. So if we do put a new field in here, we're not going to risk taking up space that we need for this. So next thing is to get the fencing around. And we use the split rail fence from Mac Trucker 921. Try and keep that nice and straight. And bring that one to there. See if we can do the same as we did before. It might not be uh, exact, but it's still uh, close enough. Do 
see if we can get the one in here as well. There we go. I'll bring that just beyond that blue mark. And the same this end as well. And then we should be able to just connect that straight up to that vent. There we go. So that looks all nice and straight. So I'll just tidy up the uh, last little bit of the bushes there as well. Get rid of those. And, uh, that should do nicely. So there's our second sheep pasture. Um, what we'll do as well, we'll just do the dirt texture and we'll just extend this bit down a little bit. Just into this area where the feed and water are for the second sheep pasture. I'll just bring that round as well and a little bit just in front of there. Uh, we'll probably add a little bit of uh, animal mud around that as well. Just blend in the, uh, the ground a little bit. So it's not looking all completely one solid texture. Uh, one bit I didn't do last time as well was just around here. I think this this like kind of like grass. Even though we're deleting it now, it always seems to come back when you uh, reload into the game for some reason. One of those annoying uh, texture things with uh, some of the animal pastures. So that's the second sheep pasture. So we've got space now for 200 sheep. So eventually what I want to do is clear the trees at the back of here a little bit and then just extend the fence out just so it looks like these are a little bit bigger than they actually are. So we'll just get the, uh, the blue box removed. And that's another job done. So yeah, there's plenty of space now down this side. I think we are getting very, very close now to the the land boundary um, on this side. So we are currently... Actually, we're all the way down here, which the land boundary is... does curve up quite a bit. So we have actually got quite a lot more space going up alongside this field going that way. So we're almost at the point where this kind of goes straight up on our land. So we've probably got quite a lot more space. We can clear over this side to get another field in down the side of that pasture. And I've just found another short log. <laughs> I thought I'd just gone round and collected all the uh, ones I'd missed. Now if I drop that there, I know where it is. So yeah, we've got plenty of space here to get another field ploughed in. Let's just have a look. So we go back into build mode. I think, yeah, we probably, if we were going to get another field in down this side, we would probably clear a few more trees on the end of this pasture going down just to open that up a little bit wider. And as we've got quite a big open area here, it's going to be quicker and easier than carrying on clearing over this side. I think if we continue clearing trees down this way, working up towards our boundary that way, and then we can get a field in, ploughed in this area for oats. Um, as I said, the next lot of trees we'll do, we'll cut six metres. Rather than eight, so we should be able to fit more onto that trailer with each trip. So if we probably start working from this bottom end, we'll clear in a few rows of trees and then work our way back up to that sheep pasture. Just so we can open this space up then ready for a new field for oats this year. And what we'll do as well, we'll just double check we are doing 6 metre logs now. I think the last few loads of logs I did with the 8 metres, we were averaging around about 50,000 per load. So if we can get that increased a little bit with the 6 metres, with more on there. And I think it may be worth continuing this way rather than using containers as we go forward.
Okay, so we've cleared quite a few trees now down this area. I'll possibly get rid of this small group as well because we've got quite a bit of space opened up this just behind. I may just get rid of these uh, few as well. Uh, but that gives us a nice big area then for a new field that we can then plant with oats when the uh, spring comes. I think we'll start getting some of these loaded up so we can get the area cleared. Uh, I'll be interested to see with a full trailer load of 6 metres how much we actually get from these. As you can see with a uh, it's quite a big area now. Uh, it should be uh, a lot better to get three lots of six metres on this trailer now rather than doing the eight. I say I've, you can fit sevens on it, I think is probably the maximum to get three lots on. I say you do need to be very precise on how you actually fit them on the trailer to get sevens on. Uh, sixes just give you that little bit more leeway so you don't have to be quite so neat if we start this end and um, we'll then work our way back getting these loaded up you see plenty more space in between the uh, bunks now so it should make loading a lot easier So I'll get this trailer fully loaded up as much as we can get on here. We'll probably have to do at least two trips. And well, we'll see. We'll see how much we can fit on that one log's just annoyingly uh, sticking out a little bit. If we can try and nudge it over a bit, if not. Uh, Pull it back this way. Oh, that, that's now falling out of the uh, the uh, trailer. Uh, oh, this is what <laughs> gets a bit annoying sometimes with uh, doing forestry. Can get a little bit frustrating. Yeah, so I'll finish getting this loaded up with as much on as we can get. And then we'll see how much we've got left. Um, if there's not enough to fill uh, the trailer the second time, I'll probably cut down a few more trees and we'll do one more full load of six meter logs after this possibly three if we've got enough to fill it again okay so the trailer's almost full and looking what we've got left we should have enough for another full load and then a bit more so if we do have a partial load i'll probably cut down a few more trees to finish filling the trailers for a third time uh, that should give us a nice big area then to get a new field in. So just try and drop this load on. As I normally, I these smaller like top pieces of the trees, I normally wouldn't put in the same pile. I usually keep those separate, but this time I tried to uh, just put it all in one pile. And you can see how difficult it is with those smaller pieces when you're trying to load up. Because it's very difficult to one pick them up in the grab properly. As often they do tend to slide around and fall out. And they always find that they always make loading up a little bit more difficult. So generally I usually keep those separate. Uh, which I probably will do after this. These piles have all gone. Um, it does mean that you have to then go around and pick those up afterwards. Which can get a little bit annoying. But with how they're working out on here. Yeah, they're just not worth putting on. I do make things a little bit more difficult. I think from the future we'll keep the top pieces of the trees separate. And just stick with the uh, thicker lower sections of the trees. So see if we can get this grab on. So we are getting to the point now where we're going to struggle to uh, get more on. And potentially make things worse if we do try to. I think, yeah, I think. Probably we'll uh, see if we can. As you can see, we've got that smaller piece there where it's just slid out. Uh, it does make a mess of things. Yeah, that's not a very neat pile now. Let's see if we can just try and tidy this up a little bit. 
Uh, this is where I could do with a blade on, so I could just push the uh, logs together to neaten the piles up a little bit. Uh, that does make things a little bit easier as well. That might be a, a few logs too many. Let's try and drop one out. Or two, three. <laughs> See if we can fit these on this last little bit and then we'll get this trailer up to the store and get this sold. Before I keep trying to fit more on and making a mess. So yeah, that'll do. So there's a decent amount on there. All six metres. Uh, there's probably a few short pieces as well from the offcuts and the ends. Uh, but we'll be interested to see how much we get for this load. Compared to what we've got for the 8 metres and for containers as well. Okay, so let's get this load sold. And see how much we make from the 6 metres on this trailer. As I say, for one trailer load with the 8 metres, we're getting around about 50,000. See if we can get in oh, a position where we can get as many sold as we can in one go. So 58,758 with a little bit left on. So yeah, that's what nearly 10,000 more when we sell the rest. Then we were getting for one load of eight. So a little bit more loading, uh, but we can get more on each trip. So another 1,142. So we're up to. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> super strength enabled again try and get in the truck and you throw it halfway across the map so yeah we're now up to 173,532 uh, with another at least one more trailer load to sell and then plus some so I'll get the rest of the six meters all loaded up uh, then we can look again the new field to play in and I'm possibly thinking as well as getting a new tractor with a higher horsepower so we can get a slightly larger plow uh, which will then mean we can get a larger seed drill and uh, start getting some larger equipment as well to help speed up the field work. Okay, so we've got the second full trailer load of 6 metre logs. I think that should do us for today in terms of selling, selling the logs we get. I was having to think why we would I was loading these ones up about what to kind of do and obviously we've cleared that space now for getting a new field in. Uh, we still need to get the silage bales and the straw bales loaded up which we'll probably do next. So 45,961 and that was only two thirds of the trailer. So yeah. And another 23,611. So that was actually quite a really good load when you uh, get them stacked up a bit better. You can fit quite a bit on these trailers. So we're up to $243,105. Um, those two trailers I'm going to keep hold of for a little bit. As I still may use them but I think more than likely we'll probably sell those now. As I don't think we'll get much use out of them. Okay so back down at the farm. Now what we'll do, we'll switch over the forestry trailer onto the flatbed and then we can uh, get those bales loaded up. So I'll just drop this off over here. Uh, I do have another pile of trees just over here by the tree harvester. And there's a smaller pile just there as well that I've just cleared out of the way. So if we drop that off there. So, so I think we've cleared more than a, a big enough space to get another field in and oh, there's another pile of logs just there as well so I'll probably get those loaded up onto the trailer ready for next time so I say next job we'll get these silage bales loaded up so we can get those sold uh, one thing I think we'll start looking at doing as well soon is we're almost getting to a point where we're going to start producing enough wool for a spinnery so to keep a spinnery going so I definitely think it might be worth looking into getting a spinnery soon and then we can keep that supplied with wool as I've 
Being from Silver on Forest, it was around about 2,800 litres per month of wool the spinning requires. I so I don't think we're quite getting three, four pallets of wool each month just yet, but we're probably not going to be too much longer before we do. So spinner is definitely a production we can look at getting soon. Uh, it's definitely one we'll be able to take advantage of with the wool production we've got. So we can start producing some fabric to sell rather than selling the wool. Uh, the other productions I could potentially look at doing is a carpentry uh, that we can use just straight up trees so logs from the trees to produce furniture or there's some of the ones from the platinum expansion I think was it the the wood turner which you can use logs from to produce uh, was it uh, bowls, pepper grinders, uh, staircase railings as well I think their four productions, if we're going to go for any more productions, are probably the best ones to go for at this stage at the moment, uh, simply because we've got plenty of wood to keep those topped up. And the spinnery as well, soon we'll have the wall. But I think for anything else, we don't really have the products required to keep any other productions running at this current time. Right, last couple of silage bales to put on um, we don't quite have the height to stack them three high on this trailer so I was going to try and put them on three and uh, put the silage more towards the front so we could try and fit some of the straw bales on but we're not going to be able to so I just don't have the height to uh, get another layer on with this so we'll put that last silage bale on I may try and squeeze on a few of the straw bales if we can and then we can take some of those because I can't remember how many straw bales I've actually got. I don't think we've got more than a trailer's worth. So yeah, I might just take the silage first and then put the straw on and we can get all that sold. And that clears those out of the way as well. So just quickly go and have a look how many straw bales we've got. Uh, what's that? Two, four, six, eight, ten... Yeah, there's probably another trailer load of straw bales, so we'll leave those. We'll get the silage sold first, and then I'll come back and I'll get the straw bales loaded up as well. So we can get those out of the way. I say, make the most of the uh, higher price of silage and straw at the moment, which I'm pretty sure straw is at uh, a good price as well. Uh, so 47. Yeah, so the maximum is showing 48. We're currently 47, so... Now is going to be a good time to sell the straw bales and get those out of the way as well. Right, we've got 110,500 litres of silage in total, which I think is going to be around about 20,500 ish. A, bit, a little bit more, 21,993. I say it's not too bad after that one cut from the grass field. So we're up to 264,841. So we won't get anywhere near as much as that for the straw, uh, but it'll be a little bit of extra. And so I'll just clear those out of the way. Okay, so we've got 180,000 litres of straw in total. I uh, managed to get the front view stacked up too high because I could pick up two bales at a time with the uh, skid steer. So I, was, I had to take the uh, one off the top and then put the other two on. Uh, well, there we go, we can get all this sold. There we go, that's another 8,705, so that's not too bad. So we're up to 273,547. Uh, I was thinking about, and I did say about keeping these trailers, I think going forward I don't think we're going to use containers again. I think I'm going to stick with just using the setup we've currently got. So, I'm, as we've got no real use for these, I'm going to sell both of these. So, we'll get them repaired, repainted. Now, we'll get that one sold. 
And we'll sell this one as well. So repair, repaint, just get a little bit more back. And there we go. So we're just over 300,000. So 303003. So what I'll do while we're here, I'm going to buy a new tractor and a plow. Uh, we'll bring the old plow down another time to sell. I just double check as well. There's nothing new in here. I was on the versatile that we don't really need. So we'll go medium tractors. And the one I'm going to go for is the John Deere. Yeah, from JA Modding, the John Deere 8110 or 8410, depending which engine you go for. Uh, it doesn't seem to make any difference in the price, uh, strangely. So it's 8,000, so why not go with the 261 horsepower? Gives us a few more options when we uh, come to get some new equipment. Uh, we'll definitely don't want two-wheel drive. Uh, probably actually go with the wheel weights, but I might go with the Michelin for the wheel weights. We won't put jaws on this one. Uh, can't, unless we can get wide with weights. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, optional front weight EU standard box uh, front hydraulic weight US we'll go with weight US glass will keep standard size indicators will leave off because we're not putting jaws on uh, front my guard no halogen lights yes rear my guard no uh, we'll leave that off as well uh, GPS uh, don't think we really need to add that on number plate will take off yeah, I think that'll do. 84,200, so we've got a nice 261 horsepower John Deere. So we'll buy that. And we'll get a plow while we're here as well, which will be slightly bigger than the current one. So I'll bring that down and get that sold next time. But it's worth a huge amount. So we've got 260 horsepower. That's 450, that's a little bit too much. 410. Uh, technically, we could get that one 6.5, but for some reason, that's 74,000, which is quite expensive. Uh, uh, that one showing a 6 meter, it's only 220 horsepower, and that's only 22,000. Not sure why that one is so much more expensive uh, when they look pretty similar. Uh, no idea. Uh, we'll go with this one. So the 670 John Deere. I think this is also by JA Modding. So we'll buy that as well. And then we can get those back and get this new field ploughed in. Ready for it to be planted up in the spring. So yeah, 106,200 in total. But we've now got a new plough. Which is slightly wider than the other one. And a new tractor to pull it as well. Okay, so back down to the farm. As you can see, I did mention earlier when you quit out the game, those bits of grass, uh, they've come back again. Rather annoying that it does that. Um, but yeah, since I put that down, I, uh, I've i left the game then come back into it. So before we put the actual field in, I'm just going to go into build mode. As I did mention, I want to put a track going down the side of this pasture, going off that direction. I will probably have to curve it round going more towards the store to meet up with that track uh, that runs down over that way. Uh, but if we bring it down there first, cross that clearing, we know where to bring the field up to. So we'll just go painting, dirt texture. I think we only need it about that wide. And then I'll do what I usually do, set that to 0 degrees or 360, whichever one it chooses uh, don't want to bring it too close leave a slight gap and then we'll just go across to about there and then what we'll do we'll curve that off going over that direction and we clear more of the trees so we'll just bring that round to here Again, okay, when we'll come back in and um, we'll uh, you know, do more uh, off cuts there. 
go in with the, the grass down the middle. So we'll go for the meadow grass. Again, I'll set that up to zero degrees or 360 this time. And we'll just somewhere down the middle and paint the strip in. And I'll come back and just take a little bit out. Actually, probably a little bit too wide on this one side. Well, there we go, fairly thin strip down the middle. Probably just narrow that section a little bit as well. Get rid of those bushes. And um, we'll do the same down that side. Just so it's not quite so wide. Oh, there we go. There's our track that will go across that way. So eventually we'll extend that through the trees to meet up with the other track. That goes up to the store. So we've got a nice big area here now. So this potentially could be our largest field once it's ploughed in. And once we've cleared a few more trees going that way, we can extend it in the future as well, if need be. So we won't come too close to the track. So if we say about there, get that load down, allow crate fields on. That's straightened up a little bit. I'll set the set the enhanced vehicle control mod so it's snapped to 180. So we'll put a nice straight line across here, and then we'll fill in the rest of the field. last little strip to do of the new field and that will be us all done for today so next time we'll probably get through into March so we can get the oats sown so we'll need to get the stones removed lime spread sow the oats then uh, roll the field so there's a tiny little bit up there uh, yeah a couple more uh, short pieces of logs I'll need to get removed that I missed. There's about three pieces that I've discovered in this field. And I still missed that little bit. <laughs> Typical. Yeah, so we'll get the, the lime spread and the oats sown on this next time. So there we go. There is our new field created. So, I don't know if it's the biggest field. Yeah, it looks like it, it's slightly bigger than these two. And eventually, once we've cleared a few more trees, we can extend this out a little bit. Um, but as you can see, we are right on the edge there where the land starts going up. And I think it just goes across that way there. So roughly where the tree harvester is, you can see where it starts going up and going that way. So we'll possibly be able to bring it up to the edge of that and then we'll leave it there. So that'll probably be a job for next year or after the next harvest before we put the next crop in. We can probably extend this one out a little bit more. 
As for the field on the other side, we could potentially join that one to this one. Uh, once both harvests have been done to make one larger field at the two. Uh, the other option I was thinking is possibly getting another open horse pasture next to that one over there. Uh, just to give us a little bit more space for more horses if where we need to get some. So yeah, a couple of options of what we can do in the future. Um, where the rock is, you just about see the rock at the end of that field as well. Um, we could then potentially get another field in around that area just down there. And I would like to get that other area of land and then clear the trees to the left of this grass field and just extend that grass field out up to the road as well. Um, but it, I might just be able to see, I've marked these trees. This is pretty much where the boundary is. So the boundary comes across those trees that have got the red marks on and it comes across this way and then it kind of goes up straight up towards the store then. Um, so we'd need to own that extra bit of land so we could open up this area and extend this grass field a little bit. And I'll just give us a little bit more hay for when we come to do the grass work. Uh, so we can get some more hay bales because we're going to need more as we grow. We're getting more sheep and also the horses as well while we wait for the new births to get to an age where they're worth selling on um, but yeah we'll leave it there for today so hope you have enjoyed it if you have then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up I really do appreciate that if you've not yet subscribed to the channel then please do consider subscribing we've got more Farm Simulator 22 content coming up uh, with this series and also the live streams as well and again, a big thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you again. Goodbye.